Hey folks, get Dave here, and welcome to channel update time. XCOM 2 is done. That was a good time. Now that I've had some distance to heal and contemplate the game, I'm going to stand by my uh, original assessment. Worth it on sale. And there was a sale recently, so food for thought. Uh, Steam Summer Sale's got to be coming up, though, so there's that as well. Anyway, XCOM 2, it's done. Glad I did it. Uh, but also, the finale contains one of the things I am most proud of. I mean, I don't want to set the bar too high, but if you didn't check it out and you like movies, there's a treat for you. Uh, what else? Stellaris happened. Uh, <laughs> give yourself 10 get Dave points if you notice the subtle change in tone of voice. Mm, Stellaris. It was... Um, it needs a little bit of work, is the, the bottom line, and they're doing it. So we went through that, got bugged out. Um, it's not the end of the world. I don't know if we'll give it a second look, just because I've got a lot of other things I'm interested in, because um, in the 4X, Space 4X genre, Master of Orion, they're going to finish it at some point. When we did that LP, it was early access, and I want to play the finished version of the game, and that's going to be coming down the pipeline. I want to do Galactic Civ 3 again because there's been some expansion packs and I have the uh, the Pimp Edition where you just keep getting free ones because I, I also have, if you come across the Legend system, I named it in the game. So Gal Civ 3, keep your eyes peeled because yeah, that's the only game I've pre-ordered in this decade. I also pre-ordered Final Fantasy X back in the year 2001. I think that's it. Anyway, it was some serious excitement. Uh, and then, yeah, Fire Emblem Fates, which I've been talking about for a long time. Uh, I'm able to record it, and we're going, and we're having a good time. I'm really thrilled with uh, how into the story people have been, and yeah, that's coming along quite nicely. Overwatch came out. I don't like shooting games. You'll note that there's not any shooting games on this channel but I like Overwatch, so that's been really exciting for me. Um, for Extra Life 2016, which is, you know, in November, but eh, it's coming up. Got four or five months to go. Maybe it's in October. Can't say I've checked. All right, there we go. Extra Life. It's coming November 5th. So, yeah, five months. Anyway, my point is maybe we'll sneak some Overwatch in there. Uh, might do some Orion as well. There were some requests. Dragon Quest Eight. Um, people have been asking me occasionally over the entire time I've been Let's Playing, hey, would you ever do that? And now that you can emulate it, so I ripped an ISO from my uh, PlayStation copy that I got day one, and it's it's going really nicely, and you can upsample the game to 1080p, and Dragon Quest Eight is a pretty good-looking game, actually. So, and yeah, you can do a, kind of a cool texture processing thing. Anyway, I thought it'd be cool for Extra Life. It's a long game, though. Don't kid yourself. Anyway, that's kind of what I've been thinking about. So, yeah, we'll talk about that. I also want to know, your, or you can, like, post in the comments, and I will respond to it, is what I'm trying to say. When I'm like, we'll talk about that. Uh, opinion time. I also want to poll you. Um, in some of my channel updates, I try to talk about the game a bit, and I try to talk about, like, a game development related subject a bit so if you guys are interested in that just let me know i'll ramble on about that a little bit in this one as well because the last one i actually had like an eight minute conversation that i cut out just talking about music theming and uh, a couple things to pay attention to because they were coming up in the discussions we were having and so i thought i might just put some of that out there and we could have some good chit chat Let's see what you guys think about it. Maybe you disagree with me. But, yeah, I cut it out. So if you're interested in these sorts of, you know, light game design discussions, just let me know. And, yeah, with that, this is what's going on with the game development. It, The big exciting thing I would say that's, like, easy to point to is... Um, one of the piano pieces that was finished 
uh, it's just the piano arrangement of it. We're doing that weird reversed uh, workflow was uh, the boss fight, which is friggin' cool. And I'm not going to put it at the end of the video because I don't want because, you know, I got to buy me a drink first, you know, I'm going to make you work for it. No, we'll because uh, I don't want to spoil everything and like preview everything because you want to have some secrets. But I, I think it's fantastic. And everyone who's listened to it is like, that's really intense. And it's like, heck yeah, it is. We had some pretty cool progress on the art side for some stuff that I'm definitely not going to tell you about. Um, you'll have to beat the game to find out about those things. And some good writing progress as well. Story is really important for this game. Um, we've sort of done a uh, super giant-esque. Uh, I think a lot of people would make that comparison. Way of getting narrative into, or story into uh, a Metroidvania style game. So there is that. And narrative is, of course, important to every game. So that's what's going on there. So those are the more exciting things. On my end of things, on like the 3D modeling and animation and programming and everything, it has been slightly less exciting because I've been doing very grindy-oriented tasks like uh, code refactoring, which is, you know, not as fun. There's some cool level design that was done. But yeah, it's been a lot of like refactoring and um, I spent some time getting the polygon count down on Reyna a fair bit. She had more detail than she needed, especially um, at the size she appears on screen. Even if you had like a 10K monitor, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, I over, overshot the mark a bit when I, cause yeah, you put her in engine, it's like, huh, you can't identify the like the dimple she has when she smiles only on the left side. It was in there, there's no point. You know, we're not zooming in, you know, at any point really. Uh, the other big thing is, so, and this is what I wanted to talk about is inverse kinematics. So I had the interesting dilemma of whether or not you use them. If you're not familiar with how they work, it's like this. We're gonna do an exercise together. A thousand get Dave points if you participate. So even if you're watching this at work, just do it, do it now, do it. So, and I'm standing up, you can hear it in the microphone. I want you to stand on one foot and just bend your knee a little bit. You're experiencing inverse kinematics right now. And I'm gonna tell you the difference real quick. So your body's made up of bones and your skin and muscles and everything are sort of like mounted onto those bones animated rigs at like 3d models basically they have a rig put inside them which is like this bone structure and you know you simplify things like you have two bones in your forearm you only use one for that for simplicity's sake but it's just to sort of represent where your joints are so the point of the bones is to establish where your elbow is and how far it is until it connects with your wrist and how far it is till it connects with your shoulder so it's sort of defining these joint places if you think about your arm for a minute if you want to stick your arm out, you just rotate your shoulder, and rotate your elbow, and that moves your arm. So it's all about rotating the joints, okay? But if you think back about your foot, when you're standing on one foot, and let's say I say, bend your knee. I mean, you can do that, but it doesn't move your foot because we have an inverse kinematic setup. Likewise, so if your arm is sticking out, I can say, bend your elbow, and your elbow just bends, your whole body doesn't get moved by it the way it does when your foot's. But if you were standing on your hands and you did that, your whole body would move. It would be moving in response to whatever you did. This is kind of what inverse kinematics does. Instead of specifying rotations of joints, you fix something, like a hand, to a point and then everything else is like moved by it. Hopefully that's clear. So for example, if you're climbing, if you're walking around, your hands and your arms have normal kinematics, but if you're climbing and you, as soon as you anchor it, so your body's dangling from your hands and you try doing a chin up or something, that's inverse kinematics again. You move your shoulders, your hands don't move, they're fixed, your entire body moves instead. We had this dilemma where I put inverse kinematics on her feet, which almost everyone's gonna do. I didn't put them on her hands because they were there originally, and then when I was trying to animate a walk cycle originally, I thought, oh, it's kind of a pain having them there. The reason is, you know, your 
limbs sort of move almost like in a whip-like arc where your shoulders move and then your elbow moves and then your hand moves a little bit longer and then they whip back and that gets you a nice smooth motion arc. I, yeah, it, it's easier to do that if you think about things in terms of rotating joints. But the problem comes when you deal with the fact that Reina can grab onto ledges and do chin-ups and pull herself up on top of ledges and things like that. And it's pretty hard to have the entire body move up and have all of the joints constantly, uh, you know, rotating the perfect amount to keep the hands absolutely fixed. Effectively, I was manually doing an inverse kinematics calculation. And that was uh, stupid, so I decided to just put it back on, and then I started doing that, and I was like, eh, Jack, I could do some work, and the hood's been bugging me, and I was ignoring this problem, and so a whole bunch of work went into the model as well. So now we know about inverse kinematics and what I'm up to. And you're going to sound really smart anytime the word inverse kinematics can come out of your mouth, so you've got that to look forward to. If uh, you like the channel, like all the stuff going on with Let's Space, oh, I didn't even talk about, no, no, I talked about uh, all the games coming up. I also, I mentioned Master of Orion, Conquer the Stars. I mentioned uh, Ga Galactic Civilizations 3. Uh, Fire Emblem Awakening is also one I'd really like to do. And, uh, oh yeah, Rebel Galaxy, I've also been really interested in checking out. Um, imagine you're, it's Firefly. Anyway, want to do that, so that's what's coming up. If you want to support the channel and make it easier for me to do these things, um, if you want to support this independent game development thing I'm going on to, I have a Patreon account. It's a way of donating just a little bit of money every month. Patreon keeps a small percentage, around 5%. They give the rest to me, and it helps fund all this. One other thing I want to mention is at the end of Solaris, I sort of did a review video to sort of make up for the fact that it uh, conked out. And one person asked me, hey, are you going to do this at the end of every series? And that is actually a incentive goal, a donation target for Patreon. So it was going to be if we hit 300 a month, I was going to, there we go, have a review video and I would put you know, I'd try to do a really good job of the production of it and everything. If you've seen some of the other stuff I've done, like my Patreon, like this is how it works video, you kind of know what to expect. Or if you've seen the video of me complaining about Mass Effect 3. So yeah, that's one thing I was open to doing uh, and I made it a donation incentive. I've also thought about doing like a, I did that learn how to play Sins of a Solar Empire thing, and I thought about condensing those and writing things a bit more and then making learn how to play series as well. So if that's something you really want to like help push us over the, the hump on, go for it. I appreciate all the donations. If you're unable to, I don't mean to pressure you. I just, rather than putting like an icon on all of my videos or harassing you at the end of every episode or every Let's Play, like I want the Let's Plays are sort of all about the game to me for the most part sometimes it's about me making smug comments but i try to really um honor the game so i don't want to like put my plug for money at the end of those so i try to concentrate it all on these so anyway i don't want you to feel pressure or anything if you're unable to um just watching the channel is help enough because the company really <laughs> really is great so Thank you for watching this. If you're able to help, you can click the link in the description or on screen. Sometimes that doesn't work if you're on mobile, but you know, it helps me out and I'm gonna record some Fire Emblem Fates right now. Thanks for watching everybody.